Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Trofan at the Babbling Belgian and welcome back to Gwentage. Today we're going to be talking about the brand new journey. So we're going to be doing a few videos. Today's video is going to be talking exclusively about the new Gwent journey. And the next video will be going over the entire patch notes of patch 9.2, including all the new cards. So... Watch out for that tomorrow, but to everybody who's still here, um, this is going to be completely about the new journey. We're going to go through all the ornaments that you're going to be getting for the journey, because there has been a few surprises compared to previous editions. So uh, without further ado, let's head straight into this new journey. So the concept of the journey is still the same. So if you're not paying any money for this, you will have the standard track. So the top track right over here, which mostly has reward points. You do get the, uh, the Alyssa avatar at the very start here, as everybody will. But uh, other than that, there's a few avatars in between here of famous sorceresses from the books. And the games I think I've, saw, I've seen a few as well. But uh, mostly from, of course, the Tanit coup timeline well the storyline basically of that event in the witcher books if you do pay for the premium path you're basically going to get a whole lot of ornaments over the course of the next three months so as usual you have about 91 days to complete this journey other than that yeah we're gonna go through all the ornaments you're getting price wise this is still the same so um it varies depending on your region but for me for example this is uh, 11 euros because I'm paying on mobile. If you pay it, uh, if you buy it on the GOG website, the GOG, good old games website, then you'll be getting it for a little bit less. I think it's about 10 or nine uh, euros over there, but it kind of depends. So it might uh, be slightly different where you're coming from. But the premium ornaments, uh, the question with that is always is the collection of ornaments that you're getting is that worth the price as usual i think it is because you're getting just a whole lot of them over the course of these uh, next three months um but just to show you what you're gonna get and uh, to give you an idea of whether you want to buy this or not i'm gonna just go to, through them one by one because the first thing that you're getting with the premium pot is already a surprise because instead of getting a leader um, skin as you usually get from a journey like we got Geralt, we got Ciri, we got Alzur, Yennefer and Triss so far. But uh, right now there is actually no leader skin involved. We do get the Sire de Vries over here as the character that will be telling the story. Although I think Alyssa will be taking most of that in the journey story. We'll be diving quickly into that as well. But uh, there's no leader skin for Tessaya here. Instead, you're getting a game board. So this is the game board you're getting at the start. And I think that is the main hall board. So basically, we're going to go through a bunch of the rooms of Aretuza. Because this is the Aretuza journey. Not the Tanet journey, sadly. But it's just the... Uh, the school of the sorceresses that we're going to be focusing on in this journey so the first one is a game board and there's a total of eight different game boards in this premium pass which is a lot there are also i think it's eight card packs but uh, there's only four unique ones. The other ones uh, you'll see quickly enough are either black and white versions of the one that you're getting originally or just rotated versions. That might sound weird, but they'll become uh, rather clear in a second. Other than that, of course, we're going with fancy borders again. This one seems a little bit pixelated. I don't know what they were going for here, but I'm going to give you my unsalted opinion, of course. Um... Or maybe a little bit salted we'll, we'll see about that but next up is of course the um the very gorgeous card max i always love the style of these i feel like these are getting back closer to the style that the Geralt card packs were but this is an abandoned throne room with somebody who was on that throne for a very very long time probably something went wrong in one of their experiments because those uh those sorceresses aren't always doing uh yeah proper experiments there but then we have the water magic avatar so with the journey always come a few animated uh, avatars as well and we're gonna probably see a few reskins of this one and getting along further a little bit we have the 12th level in the premium pass and there we get something brand new as well we can actually start customizing our soundtrack from now on it's been discussed uh, well talked about 
for quite some time now, but uh, finally they've added this into the game. So now you will be able to customize your game uh, soundtrack basically for whatever deck that you're playing. So the first one um, is called Upbringing. I think most of these are actually uh, retooled versions of the original faction teams. So I think there's only five of them. We'll see in a second, um, but most of them will be tied to a faction. Then another gorgeous border, the uh, bridge um, to, I think that's probably supposed to be the Tower of the Swallow then, because the bridge is burning and it just exploded. Um, but yeah, this is just a gorgeous border on its own. Um, then we have, uh, that's actually, I don't know if it's the Tower of the Swallow, now it makes me second guess myself, or the Tower of the Gold. I don't know, it's been a while since I've read the books last. But then we get to the next game board, so there we go. We get the headmistress office, uh, another room in Ayatuza. And I love the fact that the windows are slightly open. You can see the uh, light coming in from the windows and then the piano in the background here. Just a, 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 a few small details that uh, something was going on. I don't know if that's even supposed to be blood or just a shadow. Might be uh, that there's something sinister going on because of the fact that, uh, yeah, the school is actually being taken over at this point. Uh, I'm actually gonna just highlight the standard path here as well, the Lydia avatar. If you're not familiar with the books, Lydia was actually the um, assistant of Viljeforts, that, and she got horribly disfigured during one of her experiments. And because of that, Viljeforts made kind of an illusion. I don't know if it's, it's actually herself, right? She's the one that is capable of very strong illusions and that's why this, there's this kind of veil over the avatar because she's uh, faking to everybody what her face actually looks like. So there's an illusion on top of her face making her look normal, but beneath all that there's, uh, yeah, the results of a horrible accident. Then we get the second card back, again in the same style, the Place of Power card back, where there's clearly a few sorceresses. Uh, I think that's supposed to be Francesca, judging from the uh, hairstyle here. And this might be, I don't know, kind of looks like Triss, but uh, it's not her regular hairstyle here. But um, right next to a Place of Power, so again, very fitting for this, uh, this journey. Now we got the Saya herself, the Saya avatar, a bit sooner than we're, we're used to, because usually you get the avatars at the very end, but we got the, uh, forgot her name again, because there's, it's, I think she's a character that's been made up for this. Uh, Alyssa, you get her from the very start, but that's a bit, yeah, and then the Saya, you get her on level 22. Now we got the monster version, so the Lost Monster Team, another piece of music that you can add to your decks if you want to. And then we have the first uh, coin skin, the Prism Coin, actually looking pretty snazzy with that golden border. Skipping ahead a little bit, we get Sabrina Glevesic uh, as an avatar as well, so definitely one of the mages you might recognize her from. Um, not one, but two Gwen cards. So one is the uh, Sabrina's Inferno card, where she rains down hell down on her enemies. And then the other one is where she's burned alive at the stake, where you put her on your opponent's row and then she wipes the floor with them. But we also get our third game board here, the classroom board. So depending on what you actually want to go with, it kind of gives me a very Harry Potter vibe with the uh, pixies flying around. Um, kind of reminds me of, I think that's the second film, right? Chamber of Secrets and then the, <laughs> yeah, the paper planes riding around. I think there's like a, a, a cat griffin. I don't know what this is supposed to be. But uh, yeah, again, cool little details all over the place. Yeah, there's this, this pixie flying around in the corner here. And then we get the card bags that I was talking about before. I feel like the artwork for this, I know what they, what they were going for. So this is kind of like a medieval art style. But it's not that appealing to me. Of course, that's a subjective opinion. But this, this, these are the card backs that you can also get rotated. So they're not eight card backs. They're just four card backs with a few, um, well, transformations on top of that. Then we got the forgotten Nilfgaard team. So the old Nilfgaard team is here as well. Another very cool card back, uh, not card back, uh, coin skin with the plant coin here. Again, the gold. I really like the gold with the uh, the blue highlights here. And then the first kind of more sinister border, the, the Tenet Island cave border that, uh, well, the cave that the uh, Nilf Guardians and the Squirtel actually used to infiltrate are to so well, Tenet in its own uh, in its own right. Then, of course, Vilgefort's the... Um, yeah, the kind of big bad, the first time that he actually showed his true colors and tried to overthrow the entire Isle of Tanit. And then, of course, we also get the cave as a, um, 
a game board. So we get the bats, of course, and there you get the glimpses of, of course, the red bandoliers, the uh, weapons of the Squirtel and the boat where they that they used to actually get access to the island because they went on the boat, gained access to the island, and then just murdered a bunch of people because that's that's what happens in the Witcher Witcher stories. Just a lot of death. Then we got the Lost Northern Realms team. Um, of course, if you've been familiar with Gwen for quite some time, this will look uh, will sound very familiar, very nostalgic indeed. Then the Anise Avatar. I'm not exactly sure who she is. My memory might be a bit foggy on her. Um, but yeah, if you know, let me know in the comment section down below because I don't remember her all that much. But of course, then Dwim Viandria is one of the new cards. I do remember that, but we'll be checking those new cards out in another video. Um, then we have another card back that can be rotated, so Yennefer and Trist. The previous one was actually Viljeforts and uh, Philippa Eilhart. And then we also get the Dwim Viandria border, because this is exactly what Dwim Viandria is doing on uh, that Dwim Viandria card, where she's just uh, shaving a sheep with magic instead of just using proper tools. But I do like the, 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 the very whimsy nature of this um, border. I would have loved to see this animated just to see the fluff going all over the place. But the, sadly, it's a static one. Then our, I think I lost count already. I think this is our fourth or even fifth game board already. The Midnight Hall. So it's basically a recoloring of the, um, the main hall. But I do love the color scheme here. So it's darker. You also see the light coming in from the windows. And there is, there's this ominous red light on the right. Then, of course, the Lost Squirtel team getting us all those nostalgic vibes. Um, we're getting another avatar here. Margarita Lo Until, of course, she looks a bit weird on this uh, on this card back. Which, of, not card back, avatar. Uh, but, of course, she lost her life as well later on in The Witcher 3, if I'm not mistaken. Um, she was heavily beaten during the uh, the witch trials. Yeah, simple avatar here and then another uh, that's more fitting, of course, the moon coin. Definitely fitting the sorceresses here. And then what I was talking about, so the card backs do get repeated here. So this is a black and white version of that place of power card back. They're calling it the manuscript version, but again, it's uh, just that. Now we get another uh, older Skellica team, I think, with the purple. Then, of course, we finally get a little Nade avatar as well. So she is better known as Coral. So that's why we're also getting the uh, Coral card over here in premium. Um, you get her body, of course, turning all those people into um, statues of jade, jade figurines, which you can also see on a card here where she's changing people into jade figurines. And then the white of her robes coming back into that body and, of course, her uh, flowing red locks on the avatar as well. Then our next uh, game board, the abandoned classroom. So this is, I mean, I would doing it. A, I would be doing it a disservice if I called this a recoloring, but this has been uh, completely wrecked. The candles are uh, blue now, and there's this weird demonic portal opened up. So it seems like one of the students might have. Look at that arm just beckoning you. I think one of the students might have uh, summoned a demon in this classroom wrecking the entire place. Then we got the lost Skellige team. I think this might actually be it. I don't, I'm not entirely sure. Um, I'm also not hearing the audio at the moment. There's something wrong with my setup. But uh, yeah, this is uh, another piece of music. So there's definitely way more than five in this, um, in this premium class. So might have been a bit more mistaken. Then we get Leticia Charbonneau. She's uh, another new addition to the Northern Realms roster because she's uh, one of the new cards in Northern Realms as well. A very cool spheres coin, so going into the um, astronomy portion of the sorceresses. Another very fancy board. I think there's some uh, really cool things you can do with that if you place one of the sorceresses in between there. It looks like she's just blasting away all those objects. And then we get to, to the more tragic character, so blind Philippa Eilhart with her eyes gouged out recently, apparently because uh, the blood is still on her face. Um, we also get the reversed of that card back. So the blind Philippa is now on focus while Viljeforts with his burned off face is uh, right over there. And we get the Lost Syndicate team, so an older version of the Syndicate team that has been retooled. We get an Aratuza statue of it, or so just if you like the statues, I suppose. We get another version of the main hall, but now completely wrecked, so not just a recoloring. This actually has some more uh, detail to it, like the... Um, this is actually interesting, the Redanian shield over here. Um, but yeah, this is clearly after the destruction of the, uh, the school, because there's even a hole in the wall here where you can see the sea in the background. 
And now we're almost there, the Arethusa border itself is a simple ring. We also get the avatar with the uh, insignia from the main hall. Another uh, syndicate themed uh, soundtrack bit. And then the final pieces are actually not as impressive as they are with the leader skin. I feel like that final leader skin usually is something really bombastic, especially with the last two we got with Triss and Yennefer in their very, very uh, nice dresses. But right now, yeah, we just get the um, 180 degrees flipped um, card back of our uh, main love interests. Uh, we get a paraffin jar border, so just the, um, yeah, this seems to be like a very fancy candle. And then the final um, game board is another version of the classroom. Again, not entirely a recolor. There's this animated piece in the middle, but still it is reusing quite a bit. Um, it also looks like it's just a little less detailed, maybe not detailed, but sharply aligned as the other version is, but might just be because of the very bright colors that are being used. So overall, what you're getting is eight game boards, a bunch of music, four card backs with a variation on each, and then just a bunch of avatars and borders. Um, I think, again, this is definitely worth the price. It's just 10 bucks for a lot of ornaments, especially if you compare that to the price of certain singular or ornaments as well. Again, this is uh, very much um, a very good uh, deal for your money. Now, what is also uh, included usually in uh, the journeys, but that has been left behind a little bit in the last two, is a story. And finally, we get that again. And this is going to be very interesting. It's also very detailed this time. The text is a lot bigger than it was in the uh, original few journeys. And it's going to give us a glimpse into Ayatuza from the point of Alyssa. So we're basically going to be reading her memoirs. And I think if I understand it correctly, this will also tell the story of what happened on the Isle of Tanit. Uh, so you can follow up on that story even if you haven't read the books. Because it's one of the most important events in the Witcher story, especially the story from the books. Because a lot of it changes, uh, the, the lot of the stories changes there. Because um, that's the point where Geralt loses Ciri again. That's the point where Yennefer disappears. And um, just the point where the entire school of uh, sorcery, so the Banard and Artusa get destroyed. And just the, the sorcerers and sorceresses um, split completely between uh, the, the ones that are actually serving Nilfgaard and the ones that aren't. So very interesting to read up if you're interested in that backstory. And then finally, you might think we are done with the entire journey. No, because there's actually a bunch more ornaments that you can always win, well, gain by playing the game with the ornaments that you're receiving from the journey itself. Because if you go to contracts, and then go to, uh, where is it, journey over here. You can actually see a bunch of challenges related to the journey. I'm gonna actually scroll to the correct bit here. As you can see, the, right now they've included eight of them. And each of those challenges have tiers and each tier gives you a reward. Sometimes it's just reward points, but more often than not, you get recolors of um, existing ornaments, which can sometimes create some really cool, uh, cool variations. So as you can see, as I mentioned before, they did remove the avatar and border recolors from the journey itself but right now they are available in those challenges these challenges do not go away after the journey is done so you don't need to rush these to finish these up um, but you do of course want to finish up as many of the missions because uh, well missions the uh, the quests because I think there used to be, yeah, there we go. So there are um, challenges tied to getting all the uh, standard quests and then the extended journey quests. You get 20 reward points if you do that for each. And then if you have both, I think there's another one, right? Yeah, if you have all challenges completed, it's so all the other ones as well, you get another 30 reward points. So that's another um, 70 reward points on top of all of that along with all the little bits over here. So if you play with the different boards, you will be getting reward points, a title, and then a recolor of the magic avatar, and then a recolor of the magic border, depending on how many games you go to. Seems like they're pretty hefty these times, this time, so 40 games with most of these. Um, but they also seem to be the most limited ones. Because um, you get a few extra ones, but it doesn't seem to be that complicated because as you can see the previous one from Triss 
actually had 11 challenges and this one only has eight. So let's quickly run through them. So the uh, completing certain quests will give you extra reward points. And then after uh, 20 quests, you'll get the Apple Magic Border. So that's going back to, I think, Leticia's card. We'll be checking that in the other video. Um, if you complete all the journey quests of both the standard ones and the premium ones, then you get the eye coin. So that's another coin skin that is not available in the journey itself, but you need to work for it. So th these ones are, uh, are time sensitive. So you need, need to complete the quests within the time of the pass to get all this. And then we get le getting to level 100 in both the standard and extended. So that's again limited to the journey period itself because you need to do that over there. So you get the potion coin, another coin skin, the Aretuza student avatar and the Aretuza adept avatar. So basically giving you an adept uh, an avatar version of those two cards, which is uh, cool, I guess. And then the uh, final four, I think it is, yeah. So there's uh, four more where you need to play in with specific boards. We talked about those. Those are the recolors of the avatars and the border. Looking very, very colorful indeed, especially the fire one. Look at that. Um, and then the final one is playing games with any Aretuza Journey music tracks equipped. And the only thing you'll be getting from that is five reward points and the Aretuza Light Music Club title. If you're up for stuff like that, because I'm not really changing my title ever since they added Nutcracker to, to the game. Yeah, I know it's silly, but yeah, give, give me something that fits to my name and I'm probably going to keep it. And that's everything you would ever need to know about this journey. So the Aretuza journey. It's pretty well filled with a lot of different things. I am a fan of the leader skins, but uh, yeah, I feel like they, they're trying stuff out with this one, trying to add a few uh, game boards, because game boards, we never got those in Journey. Um, and now we're also getting music on top of that. So we basically traded out the leader skin for a, um, a bunch of music and a bunch of game boards, which is not a bad deal to my mind. But what do you think about the new Journey, the Aretuza Journey in Gwent? Is it worth its, its price or are you not just that much of a fan of the new ornaments? Let me know in the comment section down below so we can discuss it further there. Uh, and as I said before, we're going to be doing a card review video that which should probably be also out tomorrow. So keep an eye out for that and we can discuss the card specifics uh, over there as well. So yeah, thank you guys enormously for watching because this is the end of this video. Um, if you have any other tips for me, let me know. I'm always uh, open for any feedback you can give me. So uh, thank you guys enormously for watching as always and uh, see you in the next episode of Gwentage. Goodbye and stay nutty.